Welcome back to the show. I want you to just think for a moment as we're having this conversation, try to think about what kind of leader are you or what kind of leader would you like to be? Are you that leader that is compassionate, that's understanding? Well, uh, my next guest is one of those leaders and she's written a, a wonderful book uh, that shares a lot of great information. It is called Embracing Ambition. Author Jenny Mitchell joins me. She's also the founder and CEO of Chavender. Welcome. Great to Thank have you, you here, Dick. Jenny. Delighted to be here. Um, yeah, tell me about the inspiration behind this book. I, I imagine that you have been living in the corporate world for quite some time. Is that correct? Yeah, I cut my teeth okay. in not-for-profit, worked in corporate along the way, and kept running across the same challenge, which was not having enough role models yet, I might add, for compassion and ambitious women in combination. And so that's really one of the impetuses for this book is to share more of those stories. So th th there's the challenge then. Can you, those two things yeah. coexist between each other? Because I think there's the traditional thought of, you know, if you're ambitious, you're probably not okay. compassionate or, or you can't be. Yep. Um, you're saying, I imagine in this case, that, that that's not... That's not true. I would even say it's a superpower. Really I would say is. that it's an important part. I think the challenges that women in leadership encounter is that we don't have a lot of role models, a lot of a lot of samples to go by. And if I think of in the last couple of years, you know, on the big stage, we've had Angela Merkel, we've had Hillary Clinton, but they're they're very um, stereotypically masculine energy women, mm. which means they're electable, to be perfectly honest. Right. And so the paradigm that I'd like to bring to the world, and through these stories that I've compiled in this book is yes you can be ambitious and compassionate at the same time and there are certain things and and techniques that you can incorporate into your leadership style to make this effective Derek because okay. we're still talking about in Canada 4% of Canadian CEOs are women 4% 4%, 4%. that's th that's where we sit still that number that's uh, you know it, yeah. you think you're making strides right <laughs> there's not there's well, there's not a lot that's happened Derek let's also say to be honest to our BIPOC community that if you disaggregate mm. that again 1.6 percent of that is uh, women of visible minorities black identifying indigenous communities or transgender or let's add in our LGBTQ so there's a lot of work to be done yeah, here no kidding you mentioned a couple of times Jenny stories in this yes. book so is so did Tell me how the how the book is constructed exactly. Well, thank you for that because this is something I'm, I'm really proud of. When I went to write this book, I thought, well, what would it what would it be like for me to only write from my opinion? Right. I mean, that's great. I mean, I like my opinion and everything, but <laughs> yeah. you know, there's got to be a way to fill out this this whole experience that I'm having. And so I brought into the fold. 11 other women CEOs from all across North America, some of them for for profit, some of them from not for profit, some of them, one of them runs a crown corporation here in Canada, and to fill out the lived experiences of women. So the book is bookended by research on women's leadership and the stories that fill them out, and they, they're married together in the book. Was there any common theme within oh God, these yes. stories? <laughs> <laughs> what a ridiculous question, Derek. So, so what, what, what was some of the, what yeah. was the common, yeah. one of the common themes? So common themes, um, embracing challenge was one of them. So many of the women that make it to the C-suite uh, in their professions or in their professional worlds love a good challenge. They were women that showed up to try something they knew nothing about, stepped into the fray. So that's some great messaging for your audience yeah. to remember too. That's the try new things. Many of these women were visionary. So they saw opportunities that others couldn't see and they could bring people along into a future that was not yet possible for everyone else. On the dark side, of course, uh, we have the perception barriers. Some people call that imposter syndrome. The leaders are either not seen, they're not seen from externally as being capable of leading. And I'll also add internally, a lot of these women, like many of my friends, when I go out for drinks on Friday night with my girlfriends, mm -hmm. am I the right person to lead? That sort of self-doubt piece coming in. Um, I'd mention one more as well, which is the glass cliff assignment. So often, uh, women get hired into positions of basically uh, it's a it's a failed case it's an almost impossible case whether the finances are in the shambles or the reputation and women get their chance there and what they do with it is up to them right. so these themes come through and weave in and out of the stories but what I love is it's all through different voices different different perspectives um, but yes there are themes there. how do you ch <laughs> um, how like what what advice would you mm. give mm. to somebody that wants to change that internal conversation that you just described that they're you know that 
Yeah. They're, they're not the right person for the job. They're not the right leader. How do you change that perception yeah. so, of yourself? Yeah, absolutely. So there's a lot of internal work to be involved with that. Uh, I am personally an executive coach, something I work on with my clients. Um, I think that I'm going to use the word self-compassion. I think that in this, and I know you're having some folks coming on later on about neurodivergency. Yes. So what a yeah. great segue to this idea of appreciating who you are and what you bring. And women get caught up in striving for excellence, which I'm all about, but that element of perfection, right? So that assumption that you'll never be good enough is holding so many of our women back yeah. from success and trying things. And so really one of the messages is, is get out of your head, try things, and then assess afterwards. And maybe one more, one more, is have great people around you. Yeah. Have, have a team yeah. of wonderful leaders, wonderful women who ch celebrate you and, and lift you up. I guess I get, is, is the mindset too, when you try things, there's risk involved and you don't want to take that risk because it might lead to failure? That's, you nailed it. That's it? It's my first TV interview ever. <laughs> I hope the next one will be easier. <laughs> this one's been going pretty good, I would say, Jenny. Um, so what about the health implications? Uh, I'm talking, you know, the, the mental health implications of not having that confidence in yourself. Yeah, I, I'd like, I thank you for bringing that up. So I think that the when you're in a paradigm, when you are the underdog candidate, when everybody's expecting you to fail, including possibly yourself, um, there is a huge toll on your body. So what do you do? You overperform, you overdeliver, you uh, start to micromanage. Mm. It is incredibly exhausting. It almost is that, um, and I see it on LinkedIn often, this philosophy of, you know, work yourself to death, oh. right? To get to where you, you, you want to be instead of trying to find that perfect balance, which is, is extremely, extremely important. Um, yeah. Just running out of time here. Yeah. You've got a, your book launch coming up on May 7th, right? At 95 Clegg Street. If you want at home to register for that, info at Chavender like lavender, um, uh, dot com is the place to go. Again, uh, 5 to 7.30 p.m. We'll be back with more right after this.